Hey guys, in this tutorial, we're going to be learning the proper technique and strategy for rotating the sign that you see on my display using trackers and minimal keyframes. Please note that I will not be covering the basics of using Nuke or explaining the layout in this tutorial. I have a different video for that, so please check that out. Also, you'll note that I have a bit of a setup here in my Node Viewer. I'll explain it briefly, but I won't cover it in detail here. We'll leave that for another video. So let's get started. So what we got here is the classic setup that you'll be seeing at most visual effects studios from small to large. I can guarantee you 100% that they'll have something like this. And it might look complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. All it does is we have an area here for the plate, an area here for your roto nodes, filters and trackers. As you can see, I put some on the blue channel, but you can put them on the green channel, red channel, or all of them combined. So all that information makes its way to the bottom here. And suddenly you can see the alpha and the plate in the same place. Then you can see the background being removed. Then over here, you can see the background being replaced with a gray color. Here you can see the color that we selected as an overlay over the area that we wish to roto. And then you have like the view of the core. Just keep in mind that this is all for you so that you can QC your work. What we have here on the right is pretty much the area dedicated for outputting the files, right? So one of them would be the core thing that I just mentioned, and then would be the motion blur pass. Either you or a compositor is going to use one or both of those files to complete the work. All right, so the first thing you got to do whenever you tackle a new shot is you just want to play it. Let it play, reverse it, scroll forward, scroll backwards, just so that you get an idea of what you're up against. In this case, we just got like a pretty simple shot with a very basic camera move. Once we got a good idea of what's going on, we can move on to the next step, which is finding the frame where our sign is the sharpest. You'll notice that in this particular case, the sign remains sharp throughout. However, I did want to mention this step because if it's done incorrectly, you'll have to readjust everything once you have completed the work. So let's save ourselves some trouble by not skipping this step. Since I'm already on frame one, I'll just use this frame then. We're gonna move on to create a roto shape. So I'm gonna press O, and I'm gonna place this roto shape on the blue channel. Then I'm gonna select a Bezier type, and I'm gonna start drawing a square. More or less trying to match what I'm seeing on the screen. Once I got the basic shape done, I'm going to zoom in and start adjusting each of the corners. You don't have to be super accurate at this point as we'll have to do this again in the next step. Next, we're gonna select the roto shape, press tab, type the focus and press enter. Now select the node plus alpha view. And now we're gonna zoom in into one of the corners. We're gonna start adjusting the points just like before, but this time we gotta be very accurate. We're gonna be flipping back and forth between the alpha view and the plate view to compare. We gotta make sure that the alpha of our shape matches the sign perfectly. The shape has to match, the defocus level has to match. In this particular case, the defocus level of one is already okay, so there's no need to actually adjust it. As you can see, the plate and the alpha already match perfectly in terms of the focus. But feel free to play around so that you can actually see the difference. Next step, we're going to create a tracker, plug it into the plate, and set the viewer to it. We're going to track one of the corners, this area in particular, since it looks like it's going to track really well. It has a very distinguishable shape and a lot of contrast, so it's perfect for the tracker. We're going to track each of the corners. We're going to have four tracks in total. Let's just keep an eye on the line that the tracker is creating. It has to match the movement that we're seeing on the display and it has to look smooth. 
once the tracks are ready, we're gonna start ticking the translate, rotation, and scale boxes for all of our tracks. We're gonna click on the transform tab, and in transform, we're gonna set it to stabilize. We're gonna grab our tracker and put it right below the plate, and then play the clip. You'll notice that the sign remains locked in position as we play the clip. So we did a pretty good job with the track. However, it's not perfect. If you actually activate the roto node and start looking at the edges, scroll forward, scroll backwards, you'll notice that it doesn't match. It seems like there's a shift in perspective that we're not catching with the tracker, so we'll have to adjust this manually in the roto node. Go to the last frame, select the roto shape, press control, and start dragging each of the corners proportionally into position, one by one making sure you do the same shakes that we did before. Once this is done, you'll notice that it's still not quite right. It still grows in and out. So we're gonna add three more keyframes. One at frame 41, at 85, and at 138. And that should do it. Next, we're gonna pop off the tracker from its current position by pressing Control Shift X. And then we're gonna put it in between the rotor node and the focus. Then set the transfer to match move. And that should be it. Now, if we play the clip on any of the different views, you'll see that like the movement matches perfectly and that the shape remains consistent throughout the playback. And this is what we want. This is a very basic tutorial, but it holds a pattern that you're gonna be using for any type of roto that you'll want to do in the future. If you have any questions or concerns, leave me a comment below and I'll make sure to answer. Also, please do me a favor and like the video just to make sure that like the content that I'm doing is actually helpful for you. Also, please subscribe if you want to stay up to date with all of the lessons that I'm sharing with you in this channel.